Hello my sweets, it's Keisha. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you consider subscribing. Today I'm joining in collaboration with Carrie from Mama Dares to DIY to bring you fall decor. So when you're done watching my video, be sure to go watch what she made. The link to her video is in the description box below. Today I'm going to show you how to resize these Dollar Tree pumpkins two ways and then show you how I made a simple yet beautiful wall decor piece perfect for fall. All right, let's get to it. A list of the supplies I used are in the description box below. To begin, I removed the stem and tag from each pumpkin. Next, I marked one side seam on each pumpkin. Pay close attention to the ridges and mark the same seam. This will help to easily match up the pieces later. I neglected to do that and didn't realize it until later. Next, I glued six pieces of scrap foam cord to act as a guide for cutting the pumpkins. Mine measures just shy of one and a quarter inches. Here I'm showing you that I want to make my cut just before the pumpkin starts to curve. I'm using a serrated steak knife strictly for crafts. You can use another cutting tool. Just be mindful that you will need to adjust the amount of foam core you use for your guide. Next, I place my knife flatly against the guide. Using my left hand, I rotate the pumpkin while keeping it flat against the surface and using a sawing motion with my right hand to cut the pumpkin. Go slow and if you need, you can use double-sided tape to keep your block in one place. I turned the second pumpkin upside down and followed the same previous steps. Here you can see I'm left with one big top and one small top. I match the two bigger pieces together and the two smaller pieces together. And here's where I realized I didn't mark the same seams. I simply rotated the pieces until the ridges matched. Next, I glued the pieces together using my glue gun set on low. Once the glue had set, I filled the large gaps with hot glue. To blend the seams, I used spackling from Dollar Tree. I also took the time to fill the original seams to the pumpkins. Of course, that is an optional step. I end up doing two coats of spackling, letting it dry about 30 minutes before applying the second coat. The second method for changing the size of the pumpkins, I'm going to show you next. So I went ahead and marked the uh, side seams of the pumpkin so that I can mash them up. On this one, I'm going to end up cutting it into three sections. I did mark an arrow here so that I know that this, um, which end needs to point up. So first thing I have is two pieces of uh, poster board and then we're going to use um, this ribbon uh, package and uh, this is a 5 8 inch ribbon package uh, you could use an empty one or a full one I didn't have any empty ones so oops if I use the right gun so I'm just going to put a little dab of glue to stick this on here and then that way I can remove it later. And just so you know about the height of this, this is one, about one and an eighth inches. So now I'm going to take my, uh, no, I'm not going to take my knife yet, sorry. So I'm going to take my pumpkin and I'm going to use the edge of this um, ribbon to just score the pumpkin. So I'm just going to turn it and it's going to give me a score line. 
Okay, so it gives you where you're going to cut, and it'll, I should cut around evenly. And then you're going to flip the pumpkin upside down and do that again. And there you go. So you're going to cut out this section and use this in the center of this one. Now, this pumpkin is about four inches, and so grabbing the wrong glue gun. We're gonna just do two little things of glue there just to keep it together while we're doing this. And the height of this is about one and seven eighths. So it's almost in half, it's close enough. So we're gonna do the same thing. Just use this here, or if you wanna come in with your knife and immediately cut it, just be aware that it'll bring it up just a little bit, um, which I'll go ahead and there, do that. And then you just wanna use that to help you keep your knife pretty level. So you have that one and half, and then we're gonna cut this section out here to sandwich in between that one we just cut in half. So when you're cutting this one with no guide, you wanna just make sure your um, blade, try to keep it as level as possible when cutting, and just follow your guideline and you just want to try to keep it as level as possible with the table. Okay, we're just going to set this piece to the side, set this down, and come in with the knife again and just try to make sure it's level. You don't want it pointing down or you don't want it pointing up. You want to try to point it straight in there. wondered what that was. Okay, so you can see my thing is splitting a little bit. That's okay, because we're going to end up gluing them all together. So now you just want to line these up. And of course, if you have any of the little styrofoam balls trying to hang out, kind of get rid of them split might actually work out to our advantage because we can fill the gaps if need be. So you just want to line everything up and glue your glue your pieces down as close as possible to the edges. Um, but with that being said, if you don't completely make the mark, it's okay because uh, the spackling will help smooth some of that out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, since that's a part, I'm just gonna take that off. So then we're gonna put the top on and don't worry about that big gap there because we can uh, fill in some of this area with hot glue before we come in with the speckling and just make that right again so so you can come in here and kind of start building up the glue you want to be sure that each time you do a layer that it's completely dry first before you move on to your next layer otherwise you'll just have a big oozing mess so I'm just gonna put a little bit in here to let that get started and I'm actually not gonna turn it because I mean I would like to do two sides at once but I know this glue already that I'm using is uh, it stays 
uh, warm for a while. So I'm just gonna let it cool down naturally and then naturally fill that in. So um, when I'm done doing that portion, I will be back. Okay, <clears throat> so this last opening is still drying a little bit, but I wanted to come in and talk about these areas here. Um, sometimes you'll see, because I've done this a couple of times now, um, sometimes you'll see gaps that are uh, even bigger than this. If you're comfortable with doing the glue gun method, um, you're welcome to just put the glue in there and then use your finger to smooth it out. Now this is on a, a low setting, so it's not like it's... It's warm, but it's not setting my finger on fire. Um, it's just not a method that I prefer to do. Um, just for the fact that, for me, I find that the um, glue is harder to sand over. So, but if it is a pretty big gap, you can put glue down in there just so that when you go around with the spackling to smooth the joints, um, you're not using as much spackling to do that. Um, so, but it is just a matter of uh, preference how you uh, fill in uh, the gaps that are in the pumpkin here. Like this one, I wouldn't even bother with the hot glue. I'm just gonna go ahead and do the spackling over that portion. So just like the last one, I'm just gonna smooth the um, spackling over the joint and then let it dry. Um, and I did end up doing, um, I believe two rounds of spackling, um, one kind of like the, again, the skim coat, um, and then let that set up and then come back through with a second, uh, coat to kind of give it a more smooth look. But this is what we have for the, um, second method. Um, now... I don't remember if I did a side-by-side -side comparison yet, um, but here is the side-by-side -side comparison of the two. This one is uh, the first one that we just cut, um, cut and swapped the bottom and the top. So you can kind of see what the difference is here. I'm trying to hold them level so you can see uh, this one is a little bit bigger and it's it's just gonna vary how big the how much bigger the pumpkins are based on how much you cut for this middle section here so um, my next step is to go ahead and fill this in with spackling so I'll be back this is what the second method looks like with two coats of spackling and here is a comparison of what some of the pumpkins look like after sanding. I now have a nice size variety of Dollar Tree foam pumpkins, and I can paint or cover them in fabric. Here's another side-by-side -side comparison of the pumpkins. The one in the center is the original uncut one. And here's how I decorated the large one and the small one from the previous picture. For this project, I used a free printable, but you can also use the leaf cutout pictured. I also used this 12 by 12 canvas from Michaels, but an 8 by 10 or 11 by 14 from Dollar Tree would work with the printable. After cutting out the leaf, I traced it onto the Dollar Tree faux wood contact paper. Next, I cut the leaf from the contact paper inside the lines. Next, I mixed crimson with a drop of navy blue and burnt umber, pumpkin with a drop of red and burnt umber, and maize with a drop of pumpkin and burnt umber. Then I watered them down. You don't have to use these exact colors. Use what you have on hand. 
Next, I began with the yellow mixture and dabbed off the excess paint and began painting my leaf. You don't want to overly saturate the leaf. You want to build up the color as you go. I moved to the orange and then eventually the red. I continued to apply the colors until I was satisfied with the way it looked and set it aside to dry. Once dry, I went around the edges and eventually the middle of the leaf with Waverly Antique Wax to give the leaf some depth. After the leaf was fully dry, I applied it to the canvas using E6000 spray adhesive and set it aside to dry. I am using these wood square shapes to spell out fall. I first did a layer of ivory chalk paint. Now I'm using the Dollar Tree stencil and navy paint to stencil the letters. I went in with a fine paintbrush to fill in the F and the A and to also clean up the other letters. Then I used Waverly Wax and Antique to age them. Next, I cut 13 inches of this orange burlap ribbon, then I cut it in half lengthwise. To keep the ribbon from falling apart, I decided to spray it with starch. As an alternative, you can use Mod Podge. The color of this ribbon is a little bright for this project, so I decided to dab some antique wax over it to bring the color down. Next, to give it a little shine, I'm using homemade spray paint, which is gold acrylic paint thinned down with rubbing alcohol. I also applied the gold spray to the leaf. I felt like the ribbon pieces were too wide, so I thinned them down and then glued them onto the canvas. Next, I added the fall squares. I contemplated adding a small twine bow, but in the end decided against it. What do you think? With a bow or no? I absolutely love this project. Brings in all of the fall colors that I love and a splash of gold. Let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to check out Carrie's video. It's linked in the description box below. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and leave me a comment below. If you'd like to see more, subscribe and choose all notifications so you don't miss my next video. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, love, inspire, create. See you next time.